All right, next let's learn uh, a different pill. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and take edit metadata out for now. And I also, yeah, you know, I'll keep summarized data around just for a little bit. Next one I want to show you is the normalized data pill. Now let me, let's talk about this for a moment. Normalizing data is going to be easily confused with a couple of, a couple of other normalized concepts. For example, if you're uh, watching this video as part of one of my courses, it's possible, uh, depending on which course it is, that you might have learned about database normalization at the beginning. Now, that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, database normalization refers to the process of separating data uh, in tables into multiple tables um, so that repeated data can be eliminated or redundancy is eliminated. That's not what the normalized data pill does here in Azure. Another normal concept is normal distributions. You might have learned about uh, these bell-shaped or Gaussian distributions uh, where the histogram looks like a bell. Uh, that, and we like normal distributions because it's an important assumption of certain statistics and analyses. That's also not what we're referring to here, but it's a bit closer. Normalized data pill does something else entirely. It refers to feature normalization. So this is where we apply some sort of scale transformation to get a distribution or a column feature uh, field, whatever you want to call it, to get that distribution on the same scale or a particular scale. And typically we do that so that all of our features will be on the same scale, and that makes them comparable later on when we get into modeling, uh, which we don't cover yet, so I'll save that topic for later. However, uh, there's a few different ways to do that, and I'll get into the pill and show you what those are right now. So uh, let's pull up Normalize. Now, if you have some background in this area already and kind of know what I'm talking about, just know that this normalized data pill is unnecessary if we're only doing it for modeling, for our linear regression or whatever else algorithm we're going to use later. Why? Because the, the modeling pills you'll learn later in this book actually automatically normalize to what's called a min-max scale, which is a scale of 0 to 1. So one type of scale, yeah, is min-max. So you've seen in summarized data what the various ranges are. Let's apply a min-max to all numeric features. So see, I'm just going to leave that default, all numeric features. Just in case you're wondering how to do that, we instead of using by name, we use by rules. And we say begin with no columns, include column type, and then column type numeric. So that's going to include anything that's an integer or a double, but not string or date time. So let's just go ahead and run that. And what I'll do to help illustrate the point is copy another summarized data right here off of normalized data. And I'll just run all of that. All right, well, let me show you as a reminder what summarized data looked like coming right off the raw data set. So in this case, we get these uh, mins for the numeric features, like here we have negative 999, which I should change that. That actually just means that the data was missing. Uh, yeah, don't worry about that one. Here, the interest rate, 5.32, smallest interest rate. Installment, this one right here. And then the max uh, interest rate, whoa, of 28.99%. So in this case, these two features are on different scales. This one goes from 5 to 29. This one goes 23 to 145. So what happens after we've run normalized data? Let's look, take a look at that one. Here... All right, interest rate, the min, right here, see this min? Min is zero, max is one. In fact, that's the way it is for all numeric features. Min is zero, max is one. Now, these numbers right here, the, now the mean has changed, right? Because now the mean's between zero and one. Um, the quartiles have changed. The median's changed. You know what hasn't changed? Right skewness and kurtosis. These numbers will be exactly what they were before. So for example, uh, these two right here for interest rate and installment. Just remember we've got a 0.43 and a 0.93. Okay, close that out. Let's go back and take a look here. See if that's true. Go down to those. Just for installment. Uh, there we go. 0 0.43, 0 0.93. Nothing's changed at all the distribution is not affected by normalization or scaling. All right, so by, like I said earlier, by default, if you get, when you get to the modeling phase later, this will be done automatically. So why do we need this pill? 
Well, you might want something other than min-max. So z-score used to be the most common form of normalization, and just to make things even more confusing for you, the z-score is a special case of normalization that we refer to as standardization. Uh, it doesn't have a, a, an exact bounded min and max like the min max score does of 0 to 1. Instead, a z-score uh, converts the mean to 0 and standard deviation to 1. So given that a normal distribution uh, has 99 point, what is it, 7 percent of the data within plus or minus 3 standard deviations, that means most of our data is going to fall between negative 3 and 3. Although if there are outliers, it could be higher or lower, depending on just how skewed that column is. So there's not an exact uh, min-max value each time, but it's standard in the sense that mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1. Now, we don't use z-score as much these days because the z-score assumes or is most useful when the actual distribution is normal or Gaussian, like we've talked about in earlier chapters. Uh, that, in that sense, the, the scales are a bit more standard. Um, but if they're not, then we prefer min-max, which is kind of more common these days in machine learning. We don't always have skewness. And so that's why it defaults to min-max. So uh, notice here our mean now has been changed to zero for all of these. And take a look at the actual min-maxes. Now, ID is irrelevant, but let's look at loan amount and funded amount here. Yeah, min is negative 1.6 max, whoops, max 2.3. Well, if the mean is zero, what does that tell you? It tells you that we have more data that is smaller and less data that is higher. That's why these numbers have to go larger to get the mean to zero. Same thing with funded amount. But look at this. Remember, three standard deviations from the mean is plus or minus three. So look at this. Recoveries, point, uh, 0 0.107 not at all close to 3, whereas over here the max is 89. That is way above 3. That just means that this has a massive amount of outliers. Recoveries, most people, we have zero in recoveries because they pay off their loan. But a handful of people get charged off, and we're able to recover a little bit on those people, which is why they get a recovery value that's super high over here. So anyway, that's a, a z-score. There are a few other options here that I don't want to go through in this video because I'm trying to keep this fairly simple here. Uh, TON H is a, a hyperbolic transformation. Logistic log normal, these uh, can change the distribution um, and they're used for various reasons, but we'll save that for another time. For now, just know that we can use normalized data to scale uh, uh, features to get on the same scale.